So in the past few days, you may have noticed how on the Japanese version of the game, they have been going through all the tight banners. Of course, we started with the agility one. We then move on to the tech one. And today, the end one is currently out. So if you want to test your luck and try to pull LR Gohan, it's definitely there. I actually don't know if you only have one summon because I think that... That may be it because when you go on the actual banner, it says you only have one, or maybe that one is just to indicate that um, you can only get the orbs once. But the point is that they have been going through every single banner, and technically to um, tomorrow should be the STR one. And the thing about the STR one is that we currently haven't, you know, actually seen the units up until today. So we have a brand new hit, and we have a brand new Super Saiyan Karma, and they are both very interesting cards. I um, have seen, you know, seen what they can do. And um, Carbot in particular is actually going to make that Super STR team just completely broken. And it's not to say that Hit isn't going to definitely improve Extreme STR because he is. And when it comes to Extreme STR, it kind of lacks when it comes to damage in comparison to some of the other teams. Granted, you have STR Janemba, you have Omega Shenron, you have LR Freezer, you have Perfect Cell as well. But in comparison to some of the other units on other teams, their damage output just doesn't really compare. Just because they don't get as much of a sizable boost when it comes to their um, passives, um, passives, of course, I believe that Janemba gets an 80% attack boost. It may be a bit higher. You have Omega Shenron with around the same. You have Perfect Cell 100%, but he just... I mean, over time, he does get stronger and stronger, but by the point where he's already, like, you know, at the point of um, the units on other teams, it's just on necessary or relevant because you have most likely already taken out that stage so it kind of relates to LR Goku Black and um what do you call it and Super 17 as well that build up kind of um, lets them down it, it's kind of pointless in this particular meta because of how much these teams rely on damage and when you compare it to other teams, they instantly get those boosts. So I hope you guys know where I'm coming from. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day as always. And if you do enjoy today's video, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you are new. And again, shout out to the Dokken Starbreak for the translations as always. So let's go ahead and get started with the hits. His leader skill gives free key and a 50% stat boost to extreme STR type, so it's pretty standard. It's going to follow the same suit as the other support units. Passive skill gives free key and a 40% attack and defensive boost to extreme STR type, so again, very similar, well, the exact same as the um, other support units. The only difference is that it's for STR types. His super attack causes supreme damage and has a rare chance to stun. So this rare chance to stun is equivalent to about 10 to 15%, maybe even 20. It does vary between every unit. Yeah, I know for a fact that medium is equal to around 30%. And then, of course, you have the high chance, which is around 50%. So um, so when it basically when it happens, it's good. But because of the fact that it's extreme str it doesn't really matter too much because of how much survivability you already have on that particular team so it's not the greatest thing for him to have but when it goes off i mean it's like two three turns of damage right so every little bit does help his links are supreme warrior experienced fighters cold judgment in fighter warriors of universe 6 and shocking speed so the thing about him having shocking speed i mean it does allow you to utilize key for other units if you may struggle um, in certain rotations or you don't have the greatest extreme str team because on an optimal um extreme str team every single unit is going to share at least one key link the main key link in that team is going to be shocking speed to be fair fear and faith is a pretty big link in that team as well so i would definitely say that shocking speed and um fear and faith are the two main links for that particular team of course when you have the optimal units if you don't have the optimal units shocking speed would definitely be a bit helpful if you don't have you know those particular units but the majority of the time it wouldn't exactly matter because he already gives the free key to extreme str types but of course, the biggest thing that he gives is that 40% attack and defensive boost. But like I said, if you don't have the optimal units, that um, free key that he gives is going to be extremely helpful to you. And the biggest thing about that 40% is that it's something that Extreme STR did need because they don't necessarily have too many support units like Super STR does. Of course, they have STR Bardock. They have <laughs> Super Saiyan 3 GT, some of the best support units in the game. And then you take a look at Extreme STR and, and um, they didn't... And then, and then you take a look at Extreme STR, and they don't really have that. So the fact that they actually added a unit, of course it was going to be inevitable because they were doing it for the other types. But the fact that Extreme STR now has someone like this is great. And unfortunately, not too many people would like running STR Janemba, so it, it, 
may be likely that you are not going to use this man too much if you do pull him. But of course, if you ever are fortunate enough to find a STR Super Gen Ember lead, definitely go ahead and try him out on that particular team because he is going to, you know, work super well there. And I actually didn't show you guys the art. And there is the art, of course. The second hit in the game, which is a support unit, and I would go as far as saying that he could potentially be better than the Int one just because his use is way higher. Actually, that's debatable because on Int, um, a lot of the units on that particular team do share um, shocking speed, but I feel like overall this one does provide a bit more. I've always been a fan of support units. I know that certain people would rather have a you know, hard, um, hard hitting unit over a support unit, but the boost that these guys provide is way more significant than having another unit that can hit hard and it doesn't really matter if you have an optimal team because the majority of the time you're going to have like one or two units that just deal out the most damage for example you have super gogeta and um super saiyan for goku on that super str team and the majority of the time they're going to be your two hardest hitters so i'd rather have a unit that is going to boost their damage output instead of another one that just isn't doing too much but that's just me of course everyone plays the game differently but moving on to STR Super Saiyan Kaba and there is one thing in particular that really does annoy me and I don't know why and I accidentally hit a cop. Um, I don't know why Bandai are doing this but his leader skill gives free key to Super STR types and he also gives a 50% stat boost. He gives free key and a 40% attack and defensive boost to Super STR types so again he is the opposite of hit essentially and of course he is similar to the other support units. His super attack causes supreme damage and he raises his own attack by 30%. Um, his attack and defense, pardon me, for three turns. His link skills are Saiyan Warrior Race, the Saiyan Lineage, Saiyan Pride, Courage, Warriors of Universe 6, and Prepared for Battle. What link is he missing? He is missing the Super Saiyan link. And I don't know why they are doing this. They did the exact same with Kale. They got rid of that Super Saiyan link, even though Super Saiyan is literally in his name. So I think one of um, one of the reasons why they kind of omitted that link from his link set is because it maybe would have provided too much of a boost to um, Super Saiyan for Goku, but it doesn't really matter in the end. Just think about this particular rotation, right? You have Super Saiyan 3 GT, which already provides a crazy attack boost to Goku. So you have that 33% from his, um, from his passive. You have the Saiyan Royal link. You have the Kamehameha link. And of course, you have Super Saiyan as well. And then you have Kaba providing that 40% attack and defensive boost. So... In total, you are legit providing around a 105% attack boost to just Super Saiyan for Goku. And that's on top of his 12 key multiplier of 150%. The 150% stat boost or attack boost that he gets from his own passive. So the amount of boosts that this guy is getting is crazy. And his attack stat is going to be at least 1.8 million, if not 2 million. And I can only imagine how hard he's going to hit with a crit. And before, he was already one-shotting events or stages. So the fact that we have a unit that is providing 40% on top of what is already given on that particular team is just crazy. So your team is now going to be um, STR Super Saiyan 4 Goku, of course, Gogeta. You're going to have... He's the other guy. Um, potentially STR Super Saiyan Trunks, the GT one. You have um, Kaba, of course. You have Super Saiyan 2 Bardock. And there is one more unit that you can fit in there. I know that that last slot is a bit interchangeable. I think that the majority of you guys will either run God Goku, STR Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. There are just so many options for that last slot. But your main support units are definitely going to be Kaba and a Super Saiyan 3 GT. Honestly, can even like just run a half team of support units that consists of um bardock Kaba, and um super saiyan 3 gt so that you have a support unit at least in every single rotation which will just make that super str team even more broken and that is something that i may actually go ahead and try out but yeah moving back to the card itself that 30 percent that he gets to his attack and defense of course is going to help him out a bit on top of what he already gives with his passive so in total he's technically getting a 70 percent attack and defensive boost but because of the way that the super attack mechanics work now and um, that boost that he gets is going to last through every single stage. And of course, when he is consistently super attacking, it's you know it's going to be active consistently. I don't know if it stacks. I don't know that for a fact. But if it does stack, that's even better, of course. Um, because it's just going to get even higher and higher. And the thing about this guy in particular, in comparison to the hit, is that he does have a farmable super attack. So if you want to, to um, get this guy to super attack 10, you can definitely go ahead and do so. It definitely isn't necessary because his main use is to um, provide that boost. But if you want another hard hitter on your team, as well as a support unit, the option is definitely there. 
But I think I've pretty much gone over everything. Both of these cards are absolutely incredible. I think that Carver is going to perform a bit better on his um, particular team. Just because, for one, it's way more usable. And he's a Super Saiyan, so let's be real. He's just going to fit much better on his team. And it's not to say that the hit is bad. But when you're comparing the two, I do believe that... Carver hits harder for one. He has a farmable super attack. He gets a 30% attack and defensive boost when he super attacks. Granted, hit that has the stun, but I would rather get the um I'd rather have the consistent, you know, attack and defensive boost over the 15% chance to stun. But yeah, hope you guys did enjoy today's video as always. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. And this actually brings up a question. Why are they going through every single type banner now? Like, why now in particular? Are they plan um, planning on bringing out the next legendary rare, which is supposedly the physical one? Because if they are, it's going to come out on JP first. And I suppose this will be a way of indicating that the next one is going to come out. Because we haven't had an LR in quite a bit of time. So it will definitely be interesting to see what Banner do. Are they going to release a brand new LR on both versions at the same time? Are they going to get LR Vegito first? Just so many questions. But yeah, um, hope you guys have a great day. And I will see you all in the next one.